This is a little male Cocker Spaniel. He's loaned. This is the first time I've talked to him. So um, we're going to go ahead. We don't have a very limited amount of time. So we're going to start and I'm going to do his head for you first. I, my plan is I always do all my clipper work with the same size blade all the time and get that done first and out of the way and then go back in and do my stripping, carding, and um, finish work after that. I'd rather do a dog in full coat actually than a dog that I have to um, actually have to have shaved legs and all the feet done and all of that. I'd rather do a dog in full coat. You want to come in and start your line on the ears at the level with the jaw. Always remember every all your um, clips, clipper work are done off of um, actual points so that way it keeps you straight on every dog if you do the same routine every time you're going to have the same look it's going to be very consistent plus the dog will look consistent from one trip to the next to your shop so we're going to come off the bottom of his jaw with his head in a natural position dog can sit there's no reason for him not to sit through this process come in mark it with your finger you can roll it up if you're a little afraid of too short a length you can always come down I generally use a 10 against the grain, right across the top of the ear, and right up to the top of the ear, where it meets the skull, and keep it flowing. You don't want to keep do um, a jerk, jerk, jerk motion when you're clipping. You want to make it long, flowing lines. The more, less time you have to pick up uh, and drop down your clipper, the better the quality of your work will be. If you have to go in each time and chop, chop, chop away, you're going to end up with a lot more marks than if you just do it all in one flow. I'm going to flip this ear over and come back along the back side at the same line that's on the front side of the ear. I want to clean all of that up. When you clean all this up, it allows for more air circulation in the dog's ear, and any drop, um, drop ear dog is going to keep a lot healthier ears if you can get some air circulating through there. So that's the purpose of doing this. Also, they are to have a nice fold in their ear and soft ear leathers. So you, this dog has beautiful ear leathers, nice and long, and um, he's got to worry about what's going on over there in the next booth. But what we want to do now is once we have this ear set on this side, pull it back out of the way. I'm going to clip from the corner of the ear right to the corner of the eye. It's the same process as you would with, with a poodle line. Um, a lot of terrier lines are very similar. Again, you've got a point from the front of the ear right to the corner of the eyebrow. Pull this head up and stretch it, like measure down, about two fingers full above the breastbone is where we're going to start our cut. Clean up everything that's inside of your, the U underneath the chin, inside those cowlicks, and clean that all up. Again, do it in long, smooth motions, and we're going to create what I call a smile line from the corner of the eye right to the corner of the mouth. I like to put my finger right in the dog's mouth, pull that nice and tight so you can clean all of that debris out of that corner of the mouth. A lot of cockers or real hairy faced dogs will have problems with this flu. Um, when food gets in there, bacteria will lay in there. Just being moist all the time from them slobbering and planting will create a problem for the dogs. One thing that's really important, if you have a, a hairier faced dog, you want to try to feed them in stainless steel bowls. Cockers can have a curved bowl so their ears fall on the outside. Their ears aren't constantly wet and aggravating problems, but the plastic or something um, porous is only going to allow more bacteria to grow. So we're going to keep that all clean, going to turn it around, just kind of pull off that line. Start. We're going to start blending and setting in the neck. 
Same thing here. The reason we're consistent from ear to ear at the same distance, we're using the same marker. Bottom of that jawline. Being a very good boy. Come here, bud. Same thing on the inside of this here. We're going to use straight across inside. Again, right from the ear, the corner of the eye. Go backwards, upside down, whatever you have to do to clean up the, the things. Go in, the cockers are supposed to have a defined stop. And we're going to go right in here with the <clears throat> corner of the clippers. Pull out that excess hair. Turn my clipper upside down and pull right across that smile line to blend it in for you. Come back across the bottom of the nose. Clean all those scragglies up. What we want to do is try to give you some techniques that will speed your, your work in the shop so you don't have to spend more time than, you have to, than absolutely necessary. Cockers are supposed to have a defined eye, so we're going to go right in and scoop out all that hair right underneath that eye. Open up that eye so you can see it better. If you look to that one to that one, you can see how now your eye's starting to pop. Again, over here, we're going to turn the clipper upside down. Just pull it off. This leaves you with a real plush face, but you can do it with your clipper and not have to do it with your thinning scissors. If you get any marks, you can always go back, clean them up with your thinning scissors. But once you practice this technique a while, you, you won't have a whole lot of problems that you have to correct. It'll just go faster for you. Again, I want to clean up underneath his eye. All that excess. All right. I'm going to come on, I'm just going to finish up this ear over here, the outside of the ear leather. I can take this 10 blade, it's what I'm using. We're just going to go right up now. I'm going to hold his head down so you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> this again is a spot move. You want to hold the head in a normal position. Feel right at the point of the occiput. That's where you're aiming. You could bring your clipper line up off the back of the ear, right to that occiput bone on each side. Again, a point of anatomy that lets you have a guideline. It's like coloring inside the lines. Once you know where the points are, you can color inside the lines pretty easily. Just going to use my clippers just to take off some of this heavy stuff. Blend it into there. Going to lift his ear up. Going to work into this shoulder. Hawkers have a laid back shoulder. Excuse me. So we want to clean that up really pretty to accentuate the fact that he's got nice shoulders. We'll come in, follow that muscle right around, right into his breastbone. All right. Cockers are to have an exposed brow, so we'll start working. We'll just work that head right in. We'll finish this head up first. This is where I tend to get the most questions from people. Is it right, right at this point? For you at home today, or wherever you may be, we're going to try to get one half of him done so you can see at least one half completed in our time slot. I'm going to go ahead and switch to some other tools at this point. You can use product. 
always, when you're manipulating hair, you want to try to put some moisture in it so that you're not snapping it or breaking it off. A good um, moisturizing mist always is a good idea to have on hand, especially with these long coated dogs. Because what happens is even that little tiny stuff you cut off tends to get stuck in the hair that's down below it. So I'm going to come right down the edge of the ear with the scissors. Take all that extra fluffy right off of there. And again, we're talking about we want to make sure we accentuate this lay of shoulder. So about where your shoulder comes in, it's where you want the bottoms of these ears. His mommy's probably going to get mad. She's got some pretty long ears going on here. So, if you can see now, his ears aren't, <coughs> aren't overpowering the rest of him. It's a lot of balance done in a cocker, and it should be come out very naturally when you're done. A couple of tools I'm going to use up here on this top knot on this side is a thinner and a coarse stripping knife. So we've got some moisture in here to kind of hold this back. Their brows are supposed to be exposed. And this, it's really fun on a party color because most of the party colors generally have a lot less coat on their little bumps, their little eyebrows. So I'm just going to start across this head. Always when you're thinning scissoring, keep moving. Don't stop at one point and take three or four what I call bites. Don't take big cuts in one place because you'll end up with a hole. Um, if you don't know your thinning scissors real well, if you haven't had a good relationship, you need to keep practicing until you feel confident knowing just about when you put them in the coat what it's going to do for you. I'm going to come around. Cockers are to have a slightly rounded dome. So you want to make sure when you're putting on their top knot or crown or whatever you want to call this piece, four piece on their head, that you leave enough hair that if the dog has a little bit of a flat head, you can build it up and make it rounder. This dog has a pretty nice skull, so there isn't a whole lot of repair work we got to do. He just has a couple of cowlicks up here to deal with. And we'll see if we can work some of those out with a stripping knife. I'm just going to continue to blend my line, my clipper line. my thinning scissors. I think I've inflicted more wounds with the thinning scissor on my life, on myself, um, than I ever had on the dog. Um, for some reason, I tend to get my fingers in really close when I'm thin thinning, and I can snip myself occasionally. But in order for them to perform well for you, you need to keep them really sharp. Come up. Flop over to my stripping knife and this is the stripping knife that's um, a coarse it's flat because you're going to use this in a flat motion you're not using it like you would to strip out a terrier coat and pull it although it can be done like that for some back areas but on the head you want to lay it flat and you want excuse my back you want to pull back straight and work in, you'll see how much of that, that undercoat is up there. You wouldn't think there would be that much up on top of his head, but there is indeed that much. 
You can too, if you've got a dog and you're trying to get it ready for competition or whatever your plans are, keep working the top knot. Even if you have a cowlick, you can turn that cowlick around. But it takes a concerted effort and you can't lay off a day or two and not do it. You need to do it correctly and you need to do it consistently. You can use mousse or gel or almost anything that tends to make your life easier to get this to lay where you want it to. Because it takes a while before you can train these to lay correctly. They need the length to hold back and fold into that dome. Got some crazy guys up here standing here. I just kind of work them in. They were rebelling. Now, in order to set your neckline in, I'm gonna pull the head down again. I'm gonna grab this here with my thumb and pull it up on the flat part of the head and start to work this into our clipper lines and blending into the neck. Depending if the dog has a long neck or a short neck or a correct neck, you, it varies on how you're going, how far in this coat you're gonna go and how much you're gonna take out, how far you're gonna lay it back. My, look for the point of shoulder. You want that to come into that smoothly. The dog has a real short stubby neck. <clears throat> you can move this line back farther and take it a lot shorter and it'll lengthen the look of the dog's neck. A lot of buff cockers especially will have a shorter neck and their heads sometimes look like they're almost coming off their shoulder blades. But if you start to work them in like this, the dog's neck will look longer and longer and the dog will be, look more correct than it actually is. Okay, hopefully you can see some difference in how this is starting to come in here. When you let this go, this drops right back into where you want it. You want the line from the neck to come right up to the occiput, like it's pointing right to that point. Okay. Right. I'm going to turn him around. We're going to start working this back. You sit that way, buddy. A couple of tools we're going to use for this. We're going to use a, an undercoat rake, <clears throat> which you can find in almost all the supply stores at this point in time. They're sharp up underneath, but they are not, won't hurt as I go over the dog's coat. So we're going to pull this back. This is a natural back. The importance of having a natural back on cockers or any breed of dog to keep a layer of hair on them is not only protection from <clears throat> the sun, insulation from the cold or the heat, but it also um, protects them from pollutants in the air. So most of my work on this back is going to get accomplished with this undercoat rake because this dog has a really nice guard coat, but it's just got too much of this undercoat underneath there and that's why it's not laying down properly. <clears throat> Now 
And we want to blend right down these lines that we've clippered. We want to pull that right into the legs in the skirt. Because the cockers are supposed to be very natural. This is all dead undercoat. This is no top coat. This is dead undercoat. And that's what will mat for you. So if you do an undercoat rake on your cocker clients at regular intervals, you keep the matting and the shedding down to a real minimum. As you pull this through, hopefully you're seeing a difference. The shine will start to come out because this is pulling up that dead undercoat. In each hair follicle, there's 10 to 20 guard hairs and one of the hard hairs. So your undercoat hair is what makes the coat dull, what blocks the oils from coming out and up. And that's why clipping it off is a bad idea because that's all comes out at one time right in that shaft and blocks, prevents the oils from coming up out of the sebaceous gland and protecting this coat. The length of this back is supposed to come down, let me see if I can get him to stand up here, he's tired, should come down across the shoulder blades. You should have a fairly good length of coat through here. Now remind you, I'm still taking out just dead undercoat. I haven't really started on any of the top line that needs to get done or any of that stuff. But we are just going to rake out undercoat. Blending into the sides. You'll start to see this stuff will start laying down the way it should instead of just being puffy all over the place. Now some of that has to do with the conditioning spray because the conditioning spray is also letting us glide through and getting into that base. And continue to work that down. Cockers are to have a well-defined muscle in their hip, a loin exposed, and their line on their side should be what we call undulating. It is not a straight line. You don't put the clipper in the front and run it straight back and make a line like you might imagine on a terrier where it's straight across. This comes down in the shoulder. Come here, baby. It's okay. We'll come up and across the spring of rib. Cockers are to have a well-sprung rib. So when you work this back coat in, you wanna make sure that that's accentuating that spring of rib. Work into the loin, give him a waistline, and then down his hip. He wants, he, th he thinks, Mr. DeMille, that's his better side. <laughs> so we're uh, going to continue to do this. I'll try to get this done in a foot or two before we get the bell rung on us. So I do clip the underside of the tail with a 10. I'm going to work down his back where some of these, for lack of a better term, sticky outies are flying here. I'm going to work right down along that line. Remember, always keep moving. Don't stand in one place and chew up a bunch of hair, and then when you look back, you've got a big bald spot. Always want to keep moving. And a party collar dog like this, you're going to see different textures too. The, the black texture is much softer than the white texture. So when you're working on a party collar, you've got to kind of make sure you're aware of those different changes so you don't try to do the same technique sometime on all areas because you might, what you can accomplish here in three or four cuts over here, all of a sudden you're going to have, if you try to do that, you're going to have some big lines so or marks. That you have to work out then. So you want to watch how the hair is coming off, how it's where it's coming into itself again, whether it's going to be 
make a mark for you or whether you're going to be able to get ahead of it. They're supposed to have a delineated, really exposed muscle on their thigh. And so you want to make sure that's coming in and starting to show up. And you always want to go the way the hair grows. If you go flat across it like that, you're going to make yourself a lot of marks. You're going to have to go back and repair. So try to remember that. The hair is growing in the pattern where it's growing down, kind of back and swirling down. So it's always wise. Every dog, whether it's a boxer or a cocker or a poodle, their hair grows in the same way. So the swirls and movement you see on a even a short-coated dog is exactly the way the follicles are on these dogs. <clears throat> Going to hold this tail to the side. We don't want a big old mark where this tail comes into the back. So we're going to hold it to the side and work right down into the hip. Again, don't stay in one place making a big mistake. You want to keep coming through. Comb it. See where it's laying. Good. But you'll see there's a big movement of hair right here. You shouldn't ever cut off below this call a butterfly or a swirl, whatever you want to call this area here. This should be long enough that it drops and covers anything necessary. So again, watch the way the hair lays, because once you cut that off, it's going to take a long time, like for these shorter pieces here that should be long and going into the bottom. It's going to take a long time for those to grow back in. Working it off the side of the tail like this will make this, as soon as he moves his tail back over in the normal fashion, there won't be a great big mark where that's taken place. We're going to come right down his tail, then right down his tail. They don't have a whole lot of hair left on their tail. They just want you want enough in like in an area like this if he's I don't know if he'll stack for us or not but if he's low right in here it's a little he's got a little extra weight on him if he's got a big roll right here you can work that in so his top line stays straight now when he's moving his top line appears to be pretty straight but when he's standing here hunched over he seems to kind of want to tuck his rear end in a little bit But again, that's a fault that if you come straight off the back, right to that tail, you'll leave enough fill at the base of that tail to keep that from looking like he's got a real rounded croup. So hopefully that's all making sense to you. And um, I'm going to try to clean up a little more of this, blend this into what we've thinned down more. Now the advantages of keeping this hair on this dog, the protection, protection from the sun, pollutants, and the elements. Do they pant? Sure they pant, that's the way they regulate their heat. If they pant more, that means they're turning up the air conditioning. It doesn't have anything to do with how much coat they've got on them. Because I can tell you, shaved bald naked ones will pant just as much as these guys, maybe more. We have created kind of a monster in the grooming world by 
shaving so many dogs and shaving them so closely that there is a rash of melanoma, skin cancers in dogs. And that's really sad because that is our fault as groomers. We need to educate your clients to the fact that they don't, it's really better for the dog to leave that hair on them and not take all that hair off.